Hey, this is Troy Taylor with the Championship Football Coaches Clinic Podcast, sponsored by Rack Coach, Sports Workbook, Tip of the Spear, and the Top Hopper. Use the uh, 5% off discount code Top Hop at Top Hopper today. Man, what a treat. I mean, we just had the greatest podcast of all time with Rick Trickett, who I found out knows my uncles. And no one has ever been... No one's ever accused me of being related to them, okay? So it's crazy. But I, I sent Brian, tell us a little bit about yourself and where you're from. Well, speaking of small world, you talking about people being related to each other and knowing people uh, from West Virginia. I'm from Illinois, originally a little place called Mattoon. And uh, whenever I was recruited by Coach Trickett, you know, he's like, hey, where are you from originally? I was like, well, actually, a place called Mattoon, Illinois. And he's like, oh, it's Harvard. Well, I went and met my wife there, SIU. Like, just talking about your thing. So, um, started there. Parents had a uh, Italian restaurant. Uh, we had it for like 12 years, 12 years old. My dad moved to Florida. Parents split. Ended up moving uh, to Vero Beach. Um, lived with my dad. And, uh, just, you know, there's better football down in Florida. You know, no offense to like Midwest football. Like, there's dudes there. It's just, why not go down to where you're going to see more competition? Uh, obviously, it worked out, but. Played at Vero Beach High School, uh, started as a tight end. I think I was 220 pounds soaking wet. Um, I, I, I'm like, again, on my visit to Florida State unofficial uh, summer, I guess it would have been my junior year spring, going into my senior year, I visit. I'm 220 pounds, maybe 215 pounds. Scared as hell they're going to weigh me. Uh, but eventually I just kept growing and all that. But Coach Trickett saw that I was going to grow, and he was able to project that I'd be an offensive lineman because at that point they're like, hey, you're a tight end. And uh, – you know, you're going to play tight end, but two weeks after signing, they say, hey, you're going to play guard. No big deal. I just wanted to be there and wanted to play, and wherever I could play, that's where I was going. So uh, I've always been kind of a hammerhead like that. Uh, just wanted to be involved. Um, so I did that, and then, you know, five years later, it's 2013, and uh, playing national championship, that was awesome. We win that and end up getting drafted by New England um, and – uh, obviously, winning Super Bowl there, that was cool. We lost the second uh, second year I was there, AFC Championship, we lose that. Um, so could have had two rings, but it is what it is. Very grateful for the you know the places I've been. Uh, but yeah, that in a nutshell, that's what's been going on. And then uh, after I was done playing, you know, concussions and you know other history, you know, catches up with you. And I ended up uh, getting into real estate for like three weeks, passed the test, just memorized it all. Couldn't tell you anything now. Uh, but I was in that for three weeks. Wasn't a salesman of that. And I uh, went to go be a graduate assistant for Eric Losey, who Coach Trickett just talked about uh, playing at EKU. He's a coach there. I GA at Southern Miss for him. And uh, it would have been 2017 and 2018. And uh, it had a chance to go work for Randy Sanders after that at ETSU for three years, where I met my wife here in Johnson City. And uh, we had the best season in school history, besides, I think, 1996. Respect to those guys. And uh, Randy Sanders retires. I ended up uh, not being retained. Me and Matt McCutcheon, uh, who also worked for Coach Trickett, and uh, ended up going to University of the Cumberlands in Williamsburg, Kentucky. It was a really awesome spot, actually. Uh, but it was close to Johnson City, so I could be close to my wife. Uh, and then my wife just recently had a baby, our baby, uh, December 31st, a couple hours before midnight. So we got the tax credit. And uh, that kind of catches you up where I've been, what I've done so far. Yeah, so, I mean, you go to Florida State. And you play for Rick Trickett. You know, we just had him on here for an hour. I never met Coach Trickett. I had only talked to him for three minutes before the podcast started. And I feel like I've known him my whole life. So that's just the type of guy he is. Talk about playing for him and what you learned. And, I mean, winning the Remington Award. Yeah. God. I don't even know where to start. I mean – well, just started your first time as a freshman. <laughs> the first practice. I mean, the first I came from a, Oh, I think I cramped up in. I never felt Tallahassee heat. I was down in Vero Beach. You know, there was a breeze down there. I thought drinking a whole bottle of water was going to go. Not thinking about sun. I was thinking about that. So, uh, I'm doing all that. All that. All that. You know, I'm cramping up there. So, the, his first impression to me probably in live action was, man, this kid didn't even make it warm up. So, you know. He's not tough at all. And first time I was Trent, my whole body was So that wasn't a great start. And I was in a wing T offense uh, in high school. So therefore, I never knew what a Mike call was. 
I didn't understand the inside zone. I didn't understand the inside zone. I just knew if there was a man inside me, I blocked down. If there's a man on me, I block him. If there's nobody Amen. there, my inside gap yeah, under back. Awesome. And, you know, I was a yeah. tight end. I got thrown to like three times, which is very simple and it's effective. It's a great scheme. But when you go to college, obviously, you got to get in the spread and you got to be pro style, which means work. When you're under center, fullback, eye, stuff like that. And, you you know, there was mic counts, there was hat counts, and there was checks. It blew my mind. I remember uh, in the meeting room, he's like, so are you getting this? And I was, he's like, I was like, honestly, no, sir, I'm not. What don't you get? And it was like everything. And it's just not a great impression. But he molded, he just like me and many other hundreds, if not thousands of guys that he's coached, just molded me he, he, day by day. Just learned something. Learned how to work. Learned how to pay more attention to detail on this or that or this technique. Uh, but he really opened that door in my mind and my brain and developed me to want to look into things deeper and understand, understand things more, the bigger picture. But the way he thought it was so simple with V's and B's, he's like, V's and B's, baby. Draw them up on the board. He didn't get involved in who the Sam, Mike, Jack, Will was. Or I totally agree. Just I t- V's and B's, which I appreciated. And, so the uh, V's are the down linemen yeah, and the B's are the back. And then he taught you a work ethic. Coach, coach might be having a little bit of trouble with his reception because he's out taking a walk, but he, he'll he'll kick back here soon. So V's and B's, I mean that's a that's a great point. V's and B's, that's great. I we lost you for a little bit. I guess it was maybe the reception, but. The V's and B's are a great point. Like, well, who's the Michael in this? Who's the Jack? Who's the yeah. Sam? Who's the Will? I mean, who knows and who cares? Like, block the guy right. that's in like, front of you. Count, like, how are we getting there? Yep, exactly. And um, sit down here so I don't move. The static's better. But, yeah, so he just taught it, like, a very simple way. And, obviously, you can – coaches make things so complicated when they get to the NFL. And, like, there's good coaches and bad coaches. And, like, you got to figure out how to teach to each person in the room. And I think Coach Trickett did a good job at that. Like, obviously, he had Rodney Hudson, Ryan McMahon, uh, Andrew Dacko, Zebra Sanders, David Spurl. Like, they all learned differently, and I learned differently. And I'm thinking about the guys that came on later, like Cam Irving, D-tackle, converted to an offensive line, which he loved to do. He had an eye for talent, and uh, he knew how to get the most out of it, like he talked about. From the minute you walked in, the time you walked out, he was pinching every last little bit out of it. Hell, when you even came back for pro day, he'd call you fat and say you haven't been working as hard as you used to, and you better get your ass ready to go because you're going to the NFL. Like, he told me that, too, right in front of Dante Scarnecchia when Dante Scarnecchia was visiting him. And Dante had just retired, so it was a different line coach, but he was still working in the scouting department. And he's like, oh, yeah, Logan Makins, you know, weighed 305, 300, sometimes 295 at the most. And, you know, obviously Logan Makins a great freaking guard of all time, and I hope to see him in the Hall of Fame someday because he deserves it. Uh but, you know, he was he was getting us ready for not only whether it's the NFL, but he's getting us ready for the workforce. If you look at the guys that didn't go to the NFL and are at their jobs now, ask them how many promotions they've had already. There's a bunch of them that I can think of, and obviously I'm close to a lot of them. Uh, but there's a lot of guys that are just are grinders because we were, you know, we thought we were hard workers, but, like, he taught us how to grind even harder. And then when you're grinding really hard, you know it. Well, how are you going to grind even harder, you know, just to keep going? Like, he's still the voice in my head when I'm, I've am i tried to lose some weight now, and I can go for 10 to 12 miles running uh, nonstop. But he's still the voice in my head sometimes just to keep going, you know, because I don't want to be soft. I don't ever want to be looked as not tough. Like, that's the worst worst uh, thing you can ever be called is not tough, I think. And uh, he put I that totally sense pride in us. And, then, and, you know, taught us how to all be like that all together in unison like what it's like to work together with people. And that's what it came down to. Like he was talking about that huddle in the national championship, having a guy come in there and command the health, say, let's get this and let's roll. And we all went out to the, uh, the, uh, you know, the field. And then we huddled like, hell yeah, it's a genius move. Um, because like that, that's the thing. Everybody's working together in, in one single unit, just like he learned in the military, you can't be stopped. And when he was talking about that, I just, it kind of almost brought a tear to my eye because I miss that camaraderie. I miss being around like-minded people like that on a daily basis. And uh, so th- those memories, those moments, those learning experiences, they were tough in the moment, but, like, they mean something. Yeah, and, like, I didn't know the reason that he went to Florida State. 
You know, that, that meant a lot to me that he said that he wanted to coach for Bobby Bowden. Like, th- that means something to me because Coach Bobby Bowden was the head coach at West Virginia. I'm from Richmond, Virginia. But that meant something to him to coach for Bobby Bowden, and that's why he went to Florida State. So I respect that. And I didn't even know that before today, but that just shows, like, how he thinks. Like, it was a goal of his. He wanted to achieve, and that's what brought him to, to Florida State to coach you. Um, and then, I mean, going on to the NFL, I mean, Coach Skarnecchia retired, but, I mean, y'all won the Super Bowl, then he came back, correct? He came back two years later, my third year, and I got released that uh, August. But I always had a good rapport with him. Um, I learned a lot. I mean, Coach Dave DeGuliano was our coach for two years when I was at New England, and I got my credit seasons. But uh, I learned a lot from Dave, too. But, like, you know, when Dante walked in the building as well, like, I see why he lasted for so long and was the second longest tenured Patriot in their history just because, like, the way he grinded, the way he taught football, the way he broke it down. Um, He had a lot of calls, a lot of words that would, you know, kind of mix me up from time to time because they were all, like, a a certain – they started with a certain letter. They all started with the zone team, so he used to screw me up. Uh, but just he had he had a great way of looking at football, and you know, seeing a front as a three down, four down, you can see sometimes see things as five down. Be able to see it all, and what's the best way to solve the problem? And you know, I learned that from him as well. And then obviously, Coach Trickett was just like that as well. And you know, he would talk about going to bat for you. Uh, if you went to bat for him, basically coming out of your stance, firing off the ball, like. That was him. He, he would go to bat for you, and he was a, uh, you know, Dante Skarnick, it was the same way as well. And uh, you just give him all you got, you know. You would want to – he would make you want to run through a wall for him. And, you know, that's the kind of coach – that's the kind of coach you want to be for your players as well. So, Bill Belichick, I mean, he is the GOAT. You know, what is it like playing for, you know, a coach like that? And what did you learn, you know, being under his, you know, um, tutelage? People don't realize how funny he is. Uh, yeah, yeah, I totally agree. Him, they don't understand how funny he is. His he's personality very, like, on the camera the is not the same, is it? Yeah, like, I mean, his personality just, he looks for the so, media is not the same. Yeah, he looks so pissed off on that stuff because, honestly, in my mind, it's the same thing for Jimbo Fisher, too. I know the media hates him, but it's because they're taking away – You're as a media person, you're taking away minutes from them watching film and solving problems to be a champion. Like, that, that's how much football means to those guys. So every minute that they're there wasting time talking to the media, that uh, they could be watching film or solving a problem or, you know, getting ahead on something because there's always work to be done. And, you know, Coach Belichick was super funny uh, with his sarcasm. But, man, he could rip you apart, too, in front of the whole team. He would do it with every player. didn't matter who, no matter how long they have been there. No, I mean, he would get in coach's ass, too. I've seen he would make the whole offense or defense run laps. Well, guess what? If, if you were a coach, you were running it, too. Uh, it's just really impressive. Um, just the attention to detail, the thought processes, and to you know, it turns more into NFL's more matchups, like who this guy versus this guy. All right, we you know, there's so many more nuances to it uh, in the NFL because obviously it's professional football league. But uh, yeah, Coach Belichick was it was fun to play for. I learned a lot, but it was a tough place to play too. And you know, if you're not producing, you're out. That's just the way it is. And there it was ran like the military. And, you know, everybody was super confident uh, around the building. Every person was awesome from the lunch ladies, the trainers to, you know, the janitors, whatever. Like everybody was awesome in that building. And uh, he actually is a people's person. You know, he, he will sit there and talk with you uh, if he ever gets a chance. And uh, he's yeah. a really good dude. I can't remember who it was I had on. Um, it was one of the older coaches, but they were joking around that they were over Coach Belichick's house whenever they coached at Navy, Steve Belichick his dad. And whenever Bill would come back from the Navy, uh, I guess from the NFL, coaching with the Colts or wherever, the Lions, wherever he was at the time, people would say, like, are you sure that that's your son? Because I guess he was just so quiet. And people have told me that he is the greatest listener of all time. That's coming from like Josh McDaniels' dad, people that know him. And, but they said that his dad, Steve Belichick, was the greatest storyteller of all time, like unbelievable storyteller. So do you feel the same way about Coach well, Belichick being a great listener? Well, he I think he's both. I think he's both. He would tell stories. He would show us history of football. He would pull stuff up that was 
clip like he somehow he got old film from the 20s 30s 40s uh you know, just way back in the day and it, he's telling us all these history lessons about football and, and he got on the, the xo's machine i couldn't believe it and and uh historian he loves world uh all the world wars the military stuff like that and uh, but he's also a great listener, and I see why you say he's a great listener, because his dad used to tell stories, probably, you know, and that makes a lot of sense, and I think being a great listener um, makes you a great leader, you know, and, mm. but also being a great leader, you got to put your foot down sometimes and say, all right, man, this is what I think, you know, sometimes you don't have time to listen to everybody all the time, but, uh, you know, if you can find time, I think it's a great way to be a great leader. Okay, so you get done with your professional career, and then you get into coaching, <laughs> You said you went to oh, where did you GA at? Well, did you say Mississippi State or Ole Miss? It was Southern Miss for uh, Eric Southern Wilson, who, yeah, who GA for Coach Trickett uh, at Florida State when I was first there, right after uh, Garen Justice uh, was able to leave. And then, and then you went to you know ETSU and you did the tight ends. Did they still have the mini dome? Yeah, the or mini dome's still there. It's not up to code. Uh, that would probably just. I always want to say, why don't we just play a game in here? But it's not at the fire code, so they won't. Uh, they won't do a game, and uh, it's kind of built funny. And there's, if you're in the stand and you look down, you can't see like hardly on the sideline. The sound would be super tight, and uh, there, there's some spots with where the lights are. It's almost like an arch on each side. So as you know, they used to use this to their advantage when they did play in there. As guys are trying to catch the ball, you lose that ball in the lights. I was this tight ends coach, so I used to watch the guys and just. SOCON or SCS or hell, it might be a, a group of five school by now, but you know, it is what it is because this is a you know, it's a pretty nice spot here. It's beautiful, you got mountains, like I'm on the side of a mountain, too, man. Yeah, I, and then like there's great high school football down there in Kingsport and Johnson City, Dobbins, Bennett. I mean, there's some great teams, Alcoa, Tennessee. Uh, I, see, I'm, I'm uh, Brian, I'm looking at your Twitter. And I mean, you got fourteen thousand followers on here. I'm presenting it, but like three hours ago, you retweeted. This is going to be one heck of a Sunday sermon. What did you think when you saw that post? How did you see that? Did you already follow the Championship Football Coaches Clinic? And yeah, like, I, I, I you followed think? you guys a while back. Whenever I saw Coach McNally come out, I was like, "Holy shit!" Like he's on Twitter now. You got to be kidding me. And uh, and it, I I saw that, so I. I Basically, I just looked at that, followed him, and I looked at, like, it had your, like, the podcast associated with it, so I followed that, and, um, you know, I'm kind of dabbling in podcasting, so I'm trying to figure out my way. I'm, I'm a beginner at it, and uh, so I try to look at everybody and see what they do. I'm not a copycat, but it's like, okay, what's he doing to, you know, check him out and see what works for them, you know, because there, there's always something to be learned, and uh, so, yeah, and I like your guys' stuff, obviously, too, and Coach uh, Alex Mirabal was my first at FIU when I was coming out. Wow. So, yeah, and he's a really good dude. He used to come visit Coach Trickett. Uh, I think it was in 2010 or 2009. I can't remember. But he came to visit him. And, uh, you know, he's a really good dude. Uh, Coach Mirabal, he's a great recruiter, too. They, all of them, Chris Ball, they're recruiting Jesse's now. And uh, it's actually funny. I used to GA from when I was at Southern Miss. Uh, Shannon Dawson, the offensive coordinator at Miami now. I worked for him as well. So it's just such a small world in the uh, coaching world. So when you guys were like, I don't know if Shamir Ball's name earlier, uh, that was the coach I seen, and he was involved with you guys too. So, you know, that, that got my ears hooked up. That's how I noticed it. Yeah, so I'm, I'm looking here. You, uh, you put on Twitter, you said, I'm not the only guy that says this, but I wouldn't be where I am today if it wasn't for Coach Trickett. You got to love football, not just like it. I coached to return the favor of the positive impact he had on my life. He turned chicken into chicken, you know what, into chicken uh, salad. Trick it made. So you are so proud to have played for that man. So what what is it about him that makes you that proud? Is it just that he gave his all to make you give your all? Yeah, I mean, if you want to put it in a few words, yeah, absolutely. Um, just the way – he kept after me every day. I expected more out of myself. 
I mean, there's a lot of people that will just kind of, you know, co- go out there, they coach, and they just kind of let you coach along the way. I've seen it. I've been on staffs where I've seen it. Uh, no offense to those guys out there, but it is what it is. And uh, so my whole thing is uh, – sorry, I forgot what I was talking about. I'm walking through a parking lot. Yeah, it, it, uh, I was just asking you about – you said that you were trick it made. Coach trick it, yeah, yeah, trick it yeah. made. Yeah, so I'm super proud of that just because of the work ethic he taught. Because I thought I, I thought I was a tough kid I, before I got there. I thought I was, you know, had it all figured out. But I, I definitely didn't, and I needed that. And my dad passed away when I was 17. Mm. Uh, so I was kind of on my own from there on out my senior year. And, you know, he would call and check on me. And then obviously, like, you still need your dad when you get older to get in your ass about things. Like he talked about. Oh, yeah. Pulling his two boys out in front of uh, the house. Say, why haven't you guys been picking each other's brains? What the hell's wrong with y'all? Like, like he is that type of dude, and you need that in your life, and that's what almost a father does. I'm not saying he's like a father figure, but like he served the role as that, and I, I needed it. Now, looking back at that, and a lot of people can say, you know, Coach Trickett, hey, there's there's always gonna be haters on, you know, on either side of anything, right? Coach Trickett, just a crazy old ball coach, you know, whatever. You can say what do you want about him, but uh, you know, the dude can recruit. He wants to recruit the right guys, so there's a certain type of guys that everybody's like, oh, these these guys are great. He's athletic. Like, we got, like, why are we not getting him? Oh, it's Coach Shirk's fault. No. He probably, the guy's just probably lazy or didn't have one of the, or was missing, you know, he had to make five to one from the athleticism and put it at the one spot instead of, you know, tough or uh, tough minded or physically, mentally tough. Like, like, that's what I always enjoyed. And he taught me how to pride myself with my work ethic. And uh, that's what's made me basically where I am at today. And, you know, obviously my NFL career was short lived because injuries, things like that. But, you know, it's helped me after you know, trying to find my way through, you know, coaching, uh, staying late, showing up early, like those little things go a long way. And, uh, you know, you can keep and also staying true to yourself. Too. Like he taught me that, like, like trust your gut. Don't let me talk you out of something. If you know it, freaking say it. And, you know, answer back with like some confidence. And he just taught me so much. I could ramble on all damn day probably about it. Uh, but yeah, I'm freaking made. I mean, you say what you want, but I know he's doing some good things down in uh, Jacksonville State. Yeah, so after hearing him today, are you even more motivated? I mean, did that give you a shot in the arm, or are you, do you feel the same? I mean, it seems like to me that you're even more motivated after hearing Coach Trickett today. Yeah, I am, because like, I'm kind of in a, uh, a rough, hard spot right now. I'm in between coaching spots right now. I had to resign from the Cumberlands, come back to be with my wife, who I met as an administrator that worked in athletics at ETSU. So I'm being a stay-at-home dad right now, but hell, I'm still trying to coach somewhere. Uh, I've been doing the podcast and keep busy, but, you know, he's helped me with that work ethic to, you know, just keep grinding, keep pushing. If it don't, if it's not good right now, guess what? It could get worse, but it might get better. So, like, why not keep pushing? You know, if, you, if you're good at something, keep doing it. Keep getting better. Find a way to get better. Um, but, um, yeah, yeah, I mean, awesome human being. Yeah. I'm looking at your Twitter now and it says you, you are a free agent football coach. So you, you still want to coach. Um, and it says, uh, you claim by Lauren. Is that your wife? Is Lauren your wife? Yeah. I had her, I had her Twitter on there, but, uh, she, for whatever reason got hacked or whatever. And there's some like Chinese cartoon things on there. So I just got rid of her Twitter handle. Uh, yeah, she's trying to work that out. Of course, Twitter hasn't gotten back to her about it yet, so go figure. Yeah, uh, then it says NFL and Florida State content, uh, football yep. content. What do you put out um, in regards to that? What, what do you do with that, Brian? So during the playoffs and then, like, you know, late, later towards the season, once I got back from the Cumberlands, I started doing this uh, with the NFL. And I was seeing these exotic fronts, like the overload, like you got the shade, wide three, four eye, then uh, another guy wider, like a wide – really, really wide five, and you got the other end on the other side in a five, and you got the Mike and Will lined up in the backside A and B gap. You know what I mean? Like those kind of fronts, like how you stall. Yeah, no, me, me and Coach McNally almost got into a big big fight over that one day. He, he was four down, three down, five down, however you want to look at it, you know? So yeah, he had – whatever. Let's see. What is it? He was getting so mad at me because he was getting me to draw this stuff up. It was like – I don't know if you can see that, but there's yeah. like th- – there's three guys to the right of the center – and then, like, you posted that the other guys. day, right? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I saw that. Yep, I saw that. Yep. Yeah, you got the – yeah, that's what I was talking about. about. That. Yeah, yep. he, he was very extensive. And I just told him, I said, Coach, you're sending the center to the right. I was like, so you got three guys to the right, and then I, you got the back on the left with a guard and a tackle, so you can handle three to each side. 
You know, and he got so upset with me. Then he finally said, yeah, you're right. And I, we already agreed. I mean, we both agreed, but I don't know what it was. You know, maybe it's just it's amazing. I didn't mean to cut you off. It's just amazing. A lot of these people that are getting paid to know what they're talking about with football and they really don't. And <laughs> look, hey, look, they're smarter than me because they're making money doing it. And I'm not. But like, I just I just it's baffling because I'm like, no, that's not right. Like, what, what do you? Hell no, you know, but it is what it is. Or like people talking about like recruits or uh, guys coming in. Like I'll do a lot of recruiting emails or I'll do uh, guys that just signed with Florida State. And I'm like, okay, because each year it's like, okay, this guy's strong. He's fast. He's athletic. Okay, cool. Why is he that? What, show me clips. And so like that's what I try to point out. I try to treat it as if I'm back in the staff room and I'm, we're sitting around the table, we're going through the huddle, watching the freaking uh, – don't chew tobacco commercial or the vaping commercial, you know, talking about always pops up on there. We're yeah. going through these dudes and why do I like this guy or why don't I like him? And, but I try to be only positive. Like I see negatives in all, everybody when you watch film, no, no question. Yeah. But like my whole thing is I want to just be positive. You know, there's too many people on Twitter and, and just in general, just in life, uh, in real life that are just so negative all the time. I'm trying to be positive, trying to be positive put out positive things and, because for years, Florida State and, and a lot of other colleges do this too. It's just the fans are brutal and they're fair weather fans. And, you know, I don't want to be one of those alum guys that's sitting there and, oh, uh, you know, I love Florida State when they're good, but when they're bad, I'm talking crap about them. We'll never do that. I refuse and never have and will. Yeah. And I mean, and that's also because you're a coach. You know, there's good times and there's bad times. You can't turn on your team. Right. Um, and you're not in that, you're not in that staff room. So how can you judge these coaches? You don't know what the thought process was. You know, I mean, yeah. Yeah, so that's, yeah, that's I mean, my whole point right the, there. Florida State, I mean, since Bobby Bowden retired, I mean, they've had uh, Coach Jimbo Fisher. And then after Jimbo, uh, who was the coach? Was it Willie Taggart. Willie Taggart. And then has there been another coach in between Coach Norvell and Willie Taggart or no? No, it was just Norvell. So. Okay, they so were Norvell. About to, yeah. They were high on him a couple of years ago, and now they love him, you know, which is great. It's awesome. That's how it should be, you know. It's just funny how it works. Yeah. The, 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 I mean, Urban Meyer said, I mean, back when he took the Florida job, the days of building programs are over with. I mean, they don't give you time. I mean, yeah. Look, at least I was looking at, yeah like, like Frank Beamer, he would have gotten fired today. I mean, he had a losing record in his fourth year um, yeah. at Virginia Tech. Uh, but you, uh, your, your podcast – Calculated chaos. What, what 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 does that amount to? What, what, is it just football related, or what? What is calculated chaos? It is. Uh, it's just been basically whatever freaking content I have on my hard drive. I think would be hilarious or fun to go over with you know Florida State football fans. It's a very close group, like not close, it's a very small group of fans to watch it. But uh, there's a lot of deep dives into this game. Like we did last episode was 2013 Clemson when they were supposed to kick our ass. And, you know, we ended up shutting them up. One of the loudest places in college football that year. They tried to set the world record uh, for the loudest stadium. I don't think they did. So, and we went there. We just You could literally hear a pen drop at the end. Uh, so we, I went into a deep dive. On that. And the cool thing is I worked for Randy Sanders, who was our quarterback's coach at the time there. So he had the same concepts when I was a tight ends coach at ETSU. And our tight ends were half the time the Y and H split out in 12 personnel, but we're in like Ripper Liz, just, just two by two split out or three by one or three by one. We got, got a tight end at the X receiver down there at the bottom of the numbers, you know, that those kind of, I knew all those concepts. So it's helped me go back and watch our film from when I played because the same stuff, same thing, everything. And I know basically like just from sitting in the room with coach Sanders for three years, I know all that stuff he's rattling off and all the crap that Jimbo used to rattle off. So I can relate and, you know, I'll get some, like I had Kenny Shaw and there was a wide receiver and him and I were able to finally talk receiver play together, which had never been a thing. Cause I was always no lineman. He was a receiver. Uh, so I'm able to relate there. And obviously the run game, I still remember uh, cause we did the same stuff at ETSU as well. So I've also, I played it and I've coached it, but I've coached it from a tight end spot to where we're in different formations at one point. I mean, we'd have three tight ends on the field, uh, you know, mixing and matching stuff and, and bunch formations. And uh, so it really made you be on top of your toes as a coach. And it's helped me with this podcast because I can really break down film. Uh, and even before I did the Oklahoma Cheese at Bowl versus Florida State, uh, I love them. And, you know, it, I wanted to reassure the fans that what they are doing schematically, they're doing the right things. Um, in my opinion, it's not like I'm got a football. I don't have it all figured out. 
I'm just saying, in my opinion, I think they're doing the right things when they call things and uh, reasons they do things. And uh, then also did a little bit of defense. I tried to stay in my realm, but, you know, there's something about defense too. And guys getting this way. I only point out positive stuff and funny stuff. I don't ever go into a, I don't ever put like a negative clip of a player like that. Because anybody on Twitter can point that out. I mean, I'm not trying to say, you know, we got to point this out because it's bad. You know, it, it's, people can't do that. But um, it's like being positive, if it, that makes sense. Yeah, I mean, when I spoke to Gene Chizik, he was only supposed to give me 15 minutes. He stayed on for an hour and 15. But when he worked for ESPN, he said that he tried to take the coach's side. He did not say, hey, this guy needs to be fired. He would say, hey, this is what's going on. You know, this is what this guy's had to overcome. So he kind of said, even though he was the media, he wasn't the media. He was actually a coach giving a coach's perspective do you feel the same way yeah i mean if i could ever make that freaking part that means yeah i'd love to be on that side and i do feel the same way uh towards a lot of that just because again you do not know what goes on in that staff room you do not know each dynamic for each person sitting around that table uh there's a lot of things that go on and you know coaching can be awesome and coaching can be rough and it all depends on who you're sitting next to so uh you know there's a lot of programs that got a lot of great things going on and there's some programs that are working through some kinks um, but if they're a good group and a good staff and they can work together, like good things happen. And I, I think uh, I've been a part of a couple teams that have been like that. And very fortunate the coaches uh, were able to get that done. But yeah, I'd love to be on the side of the coaches for sure. So you you won a national championship at Florida State and you won a Super Bowl. Yes. Wow. Been a part of teams, yes, that have done that and, and I mean, played both and started. Yes. Man, that is that that's crazy. I mean, to have a national championship and a Super Bowl ring, that's pretty awesome. Appreciate that. And uh, obviously being surrounded by those teammates that were great. The, those guys elevated you. Obviously being around Tom, Danny Mandola, Rob Gronkowski, Julian Edelman, uh, Gerard Mayo, Dante Hightower, Jamie Collins. I could just keep going on forever and ever. And guys, Dan Conley, Ron Wendell. I could keep going on forever, uh, Nate Solder, that just made you better, made you a better player. And just being around those guys every day. And obviously at Florida State, everybody held each other accountable. And uh, when we were – obviously when we got really good, I was more older, so I had to, you know, be more of a step if I saw something. I had to speak up. And, like, that was never my forte. Hell, even doing speaking things with the media was never my forte. But uh, now I'm enjoying the crap out of it. And because I'm not – I can I, – I don't have to play a game on Saturday or Sunday. So I don't have to think about crap or, or be careful what I say. Now I can kind of say whatever. Uh, so I've been really loving it. It's been a lot of fun. Uh, but being on those teams, man, those, those teammates really elevate you and make you better. And obviously being around great coaches, uh, it, it's a team effort always. I know it sounds cliche, but that's a thing. Uh, just everybody coming together and moving in one direction. Yeah, I'm I'm, uh, I'm putting your Twitter up here. I don't know if you can see it because you're on your phone. But, I mean, dude, I'm yeah. looking at your Twitter. You've got 14,000 followers. I mean, that's a lot of followers. Coach McNally's got 7,000. How did you get 14,000 followers? Was it a steadily um, thing, or was it all at once, or what? No, it was definitely from when I played. I think I had, like, almost 20,000, and then I, when I was done, I lost a bunch. And, uh, and then I, I started recruiting as a football coach, and that picks up a little bit. And uh, some of, a few thousand probably gradual. And then uh, since I started doing some content, I think, I've, since, I think mid-December – I've had like 1,500 to 2,000 new followers maybe, which is really awesome. A lot of Florida State people. It's really cool. Um, appreciate you guys uh, following me and checking it out. And uh, I've learned a lot being on this whole Twitter thing. I've never been a huge social media guy, but uh, it also helps me stay sharp for football uh, just in case I do go somewhere else. Uh, so yeah, and that's what Coach McNally said. That yeah. That's what Coach McNally said. He said he enjoys it because he – I mean, he, he, he's told me – personally that he this is basically he likes it because it helps him because he's actually learning and he's continuing to stay sharp you know when I first met him I mean he was sitting there in front of his Bengals iPad doing a study of the Ravens offense and he was just he watched every run I mean he knows more about the Ravens run game than probably the Ravens do right now with the new offensive coordinator he knew everything but now that he's on Twitter I mean, he's putting out content. I'm looking here. You know, you've got video of a Florida State commit. Um, 
And then, like, you got uh, episode three, preview of uh, Calculated Chaos. Is this from a spring scrimmage? You got film? Yeah, I got the whole entire thing. Thank you to Matt McCutcheon out there who I worked with at ETSU. He he, uh, sent me that film uh, on my heart. So this is practice tape? This is this is a um, goal line marathon. Uh, I kid you not. I think it's like 20 plus goal line plays straight. No subs, at least on offense. I did see throughout there was a few D line that subbed in towards the end. They snuck them in there. But and this from this like, spring? This is from 2013 spring. My oh, 2013. Year. Okay, so you got you got but it old. was. The, but it was turning point of when we knew we could be damn good because that was this was a bloodbath and a massacre. I'm talking. There's cracked ribs. There's uh, AC broken AC joints. Uh, there's, there's guys going, going to the on ground. This this is all goal line personal. There's no wide receivers in the game right now. This whole entire time. Yeah, right here. Back to back to back to back. So it, it was quite the bloodbath. It's Civil War football, if you will. And uh, I, I try to relate a lot of things to being in the bar drinking. Your boy needs some help. Like right here, you try to help him. And all of a sudden, your drunk buddy across the room, you know, he's yeah. going to come over and help you. That's why I oh. myself myself because yeah. I was worthless. <laughs> I mean, this is just uh, inside run. This, this is just this inside is run here. right yeah. here. Basically, I mean, yeah, it, this is this is Coach Trickett versus two. Who's the D line coach? It would be Odell Higgins. He's still there. Probably one of the longest tenured. He is the longest tenured. Uh, what you call it? Yeah, he was there with Bobby Bowden. Yeah, he was there. I in mean, like, so was like ninety three. Oh man, this is coach, I believe. Or GA. Yeah, this is old school football, man. And I got a bunch of funny clips of people in the background on the end zone shots, and I point out little things. I'll point out trainers that I remember. And I ran to him later down the road in the NFL during a TV timeout. And we're out there on the hash getting water. And I'm like, oh, hey, man, what's up? You know, there's a lot of little things like that. And uh, just take you back down the memory bank. A lot of people don't know. And, like, the Florida State fans, the true ones, they really appreciate all the stuff I've been putting out. So I really appreciate them uh, listening. Because if not, I'd probably be just talking to nobody. Yeah. So now you've got Coach McNally here. It's you know? so original, man. It's so original. It's so genuine. He he's in a locker room somewhere in a gym, probably just getting his workout in, and he's got, he just sets his phone. He reminds me of like a grown ass kid. And he, he's got his phone in, in the locker, and he's over there trying to show you how to crouch down and either take a dump in the woods or just. But he's actually saying some good stuff. He's talking about sumo wrestling and rooting people out of the ground. And basically, in my mind, like my words, I'd say he's pushing off his insets of his feet right there, the way he's got him positioned, and then rolling in your hips and, and driving through. Uh, so I really appreciated that because he's very uh, detailed on body movement. And this last yeah. part right here, he's pulling the, uh, his phone out, just cracked me up, man. Was, this guy is a nut. I like him so. Uh, so I think who he was is in this the room? Guy? In, huh? Who is this guy that he got into a beef with? Tom Blazer. <laughs> who is this guy? Know. And how could you ever question the goat? I mean, if you don't agree with him, dude, like, why are you calling him out on Twitter? We can't I didn't even know find he got you. With anybody? But yeah. You didn't didn't know know this. He got into a beef with a guy. A guy told him that by teaching a pronated or hyperextended back, which no one gets to the point where their back is as extreme as that sumo wrestler picture. He said, you're causing younger kids to have injuries. I mean, it's a physical game. But this guy, Coach McNally blocked him, and the guy was outraged, said that Coach McNally is not a lifelong learner because he would not discuss with him that he's actually teaching kids to get injured. Yeah. Well, the cool thing about America is the free country. You can say and do what you want. So, Amen. You know, what, so what, 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 what do we got here? So this right here, I love this play right here. I, I, God, if I ever be an OC someday, I'm just fine. Woo! I, I love the full I love the back dive, right? But I love to always have the running back go opposite of the fullback dive and have the quarterback reverse pivot so you could always flip it. To him if you want if you know like you've got numbers out there then you can see kb come down here and cracking the shit out of him oh line block him like you're going inside zone to the left but lose him and get leverage on that backside upfield shoulder and basically yeah. that's how it goes and i just wanted to point out skill guys block because that is key those oh, are man. touchdown blocks i'll coach the tight ends on this too like even on screens when you run downfield run vertical block third level like hey go get your touchdown block because you never know when that's going to be the touchdown block and would they really call great targeting. job would they call targeting on that today Oh, God, I don't even want to get into that. But I, Yeah, I mean, yeah, that is probably. the worst rule ever. It's so That's, gray. It's, 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 I feel bad for defenses, defense coaches. I feel bad for defensive players. Like, like, what do you teach them? And, like, now you can see, like, when they do drills, it's like this is a, a, a ass drill. Like, you're not getting anything out of it. You're just tagging off. And you see it pop up in the game. Like, nobody knows how to wrap up and tackle. And, like, they got these uh, new prospects coming out for the NFL draft, and I'm looking at them. 
I'm like, if they're in the senior bowl, I'm like, they tackle like shit. Like, they, they have poor tackling form. They're playing not to get hurt and just try to wrap up. Like, they got to go through the contact. So, like, but there's a happy medium, too. Like, how do you not target a guy? Okay. Yeah, I, I get that part because I'm, you know, I've had I mean, I, I understand. But, uh, I, 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 agree, I agree, man. Like, I understand that targeting should be a 15-yard penalty. But to kick a guy out of a game for one hit, like, dude, it needs to be unsportsmanlike. Like, you – the guy's walking off the field and you jump in the guy's ear hole. Like, just because you tackle a dude, they're going to kick you out of a game. Like, that's ridiculous. Yeah, that's that, screw him over for the, the next half yes. of the next game. You know, it's just it's bull crap. So. Now, who is this it's big fella here you got? Who is this big fella you got film one here? Who is this guy? So, this is my big old ass. Uh, Pro Day. Oh, is Pro Day was a, yeah, yeah, so Pro Day was at Florida State the other day on Friday. And, uh, oh, man. See, I, that's I, what I like, dude. You make fun of yourself. That, that's, I, yeah, that, I mean, it is what it is. I was trying to say, hey, be loose, be poised. Like, shit's going to happen, and you just got to fall down. You got to get back up. I love Chumbawamba. That song, I get knocked down, I get up again. I think that's a great song for life. And, uh, yeah. you know, Oh, this, now, this, this, this is this guy right here. What was his nickname? This is Dumar. Phil Dumar. Uh, awesome dude. Long snapper. He, he did a complete 180 from – we also played against each other in high school. But at Jupiter, he just did a complete 180, turned his life around, and ended up starting as a long snapper. And he's very successful today. He actually uh, paddle boarded from the Bahamas over to Florida uh, a couple years ago. Red so Lightning. Top, That's Red day. Lightning right here, right? Red Lightning. And then you, then you got Red Lightning in the background. Sorry, I couldn't see your point. I was talking about the long snapper. But yeah, Red yeah, Lightning what in the background. To Red Lightning? That's Frankie. That's Frankie. Where's he's Red Lightning at now? He is a soccer and softball uh, equipment manager at Florida State. He's still in Tallahassee. He's a great dude. Wow. Uh, loved him. His effort was unbelievable. And, like, he was one of those managers. Like, there's some managers that kind of get in the way on game day, but he wasn't. Like, you wouldn't want him right there in the huddle with you. Like, he was going to battle with you. It was something about that guy. Just, like, you love being around him. It's even weirder because he was from Key West. And most, like, redheaded dudes that are fair skin don't do well in Key West. But he was from there. Just a different kind of breed. He gave me a uh, he gave me a shirt from his high school in Key West, and they were the Fighting Conks. So that was really cool. I still have oh, that man, shirt the today. Call. Yep. But, now, oh, tell me what Northrop. this is right here. Because I saw so this Reggie, on Twitter, but I, I didn't really get it. What was, so what was Northrop, going on here? So Reggie Northrup, very goofy dude. Is very. This was viral when this after the Clemson game, after we won. He's got a few other clips where he does this robot thing, and he celebrates, and he does weird, really weird looks. Funniest dude ever, young guy. And this is a way I was talking about special teams because Florida State – I uh, got a lot of young guys and some guys that are trying to contribute. And I was just talking about how you get on special teams to contribute. If you're a young guy, it's a great way. And Reggie Northrup is very physical. I got I got clips after clip of the kickoffs of him and uh, Akima Legway knocking the shit out of some dudes going downfield. All right, formation into the boundary right here, man. You you really have a good Twitter for coaches. I mean, because you got a lot of good content here, man. Uh, we need to, to get funny, Coach though, McNally to get lost. We need to get Coach McNally, man, to give you a shout out. I have to teach him how to retweet, you know, because he's not he's not a big retweeter. I don't think he gets the retweet yet. But here's yeah, the formation yeah. of the boundary. Yep, this is just basically another reverse uh, off of the inside zone action out of FIB. Woo! Uh, split flow outside zone. Basically, the split flow H there. You got to hook up the end if you can. If the end gets upfield, you got to kick him out. But he ends up getting tight and squeezing down off the tackle's ass, which the technique right there by the left tackle is called a reverse dick. Well, I learned that from Coach Trickett. Basically, you revert dick, reverse dick your leverage on them. Get, again, you get that backside shoulder. And, uh, you know, it's not the cleanest picture right here. But these are also our backup guys. These are our twos because we only played one or two games in my senior year where we played the full game. Uh, but other than that, everybody else got in. These guys were always ready, yeah. always prepared. These are the guys that are out in the workforce right now that are really successful, uh, making a lot of money. So I'm really happy for those guys. I want to give them a shout out. I, I threw their name up on there as well. And you saw Jacob Cooper right there making a touchdown lead block. Uh, you know, just Brett Favre in it almost. Yeah, man. I mean, you have a great Twitter, man. I see why you have 14,000 followers. You're going to have more. Um, you know, I appreciate you coming on, man. I mean, you just we've been going 45 minutes, dude. I think we could, pro could probably go a lot longer just looking at your Twitter. I mean, you have a great uh -huh. Twitter. Um, what else would it, you man. like I, to tell uh, the clinic? What else would you like to tell the clinic? Anybody that's watching now or, or going to watch, how can people keep up with you? Um, 
I mean, I know the Florida State fans have got to appreciate, you know, what you're doing. Oh, Jim Tim. Jim Tim is on here. I don't know if you know Jim Tim, but he's asking a bunch of questions. Jim Tim is from Rochester, New York. He's on Team Totem Pole. Greatest defense you ever faced and hardest player you faced. Well, obviously the NFL, that'd be every Sunday. Everybody's good. But uh, schematically, it'd be Belichick's defense and, and Matt Patricia's. Uh, just schematically, good Lord, they have everything. Uh, that the, the man. And then I would say the toughest defense in college would have been uh, Virginia Tech in 2012, their scheme. Uh, I think it was Coach Bud Foster. That was really good with all the fire zones. We were trying to run away from it, check the outside zone away from it, and we weren't getting anywhere. So we started checking into the blitz, the fire zone, and then we started basically hooking everybody up, and we're out the gate, and that's how we win uh, in Virginia Tech at night in Blacksburg. Uh, yeah, I remember that. was good? Uh, obviously, Auburn's defense, my God, they were so good, and their defensive front was amazing. Uh, trying to get those guys and reach them up was, was extremely difficult. Uh, and then really the guys that played <laughs> And uh, like Timmy Jernigan, uh, Niall Stample, you had Jaco McDaniel, Devontae McAllister, you had Bjorn Warner at one point. Uh, there was a lot of good dudes that went through there. Uh, and Eddie Goldman, I keep on going. Then the defense we faced, you know, the linebacker core was as good. Then, you know, LaMarcus Jordan was damn good at Florida State as well. Um, I'm trying to think in college, who else would be good? Oh, Boston College by far was the closest game we came to losing. And uh, they were the most physical, I would say. And then, well, speaking of physical, every year, Florida always had some dudes on defense, especially in that line. They played that odd four-eyed, kind of fit the bear post-snap uh, defense. That was tough as well. You really had to be on your A game. Is it four downs? Is it three downs? Is it one mic? Is it two mics? Uh, if you're a center. So, you know, those guys are pretty tough. But uh, Ravens defense in the 2014 divisional round were really good. Their front, not a, as incredible. And then, obviously, Sue, when I played him versus the Lions, and also played him versus uh, Miami. Uh, for two years in a row, really good player. Uh, but scheme-wise as well, Philadelphia was good in 2015. The team they did, basically they had a shade or a G, four I, then stand-up dude, and then they had like a loose three or a tight three, and then they had a five, and you're like, okay, is it four down, is it three down, or hell, is it even five down? Uh, you know, just depending on the personnel that was in, you had to know who was in. So when you start mixing matching personnel, and you're still fitting the same things, but it looks different, like those are the toughest defenses in my opinion. Yeah, no doubt. So, uh, Jim Tim wants to know who was the quarterback at Florida State when you so, were there. My senior year was Jameis Winston. Before that, it would have been EJ Manuel, 2012, 2011, 2010. Virginia guy. As well. Yeah, Virginia guy. Yep. He's from Virginia. Virginia Beach. Beach. That's right. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yep. EJ Manuel, awesome quarterback. Great dude. Uh, you know, we grew together as an offense. I, it, was, it was tough because, like, the year after. We, uh, he leaves, we end up winning, but like we could have done it with him too. It's just like we were all just, we all weren't there yet in 2012. And I still talk about that year. We don't lose to NC State or Florida. You know, we're, we're probably, we're playing Bam in the championship and it's not Notre Dame. Uh, but shout out to my buddy who I played with the Vero Beach, Zeke Mata. He was there playing the national championship as a safety. So good for him that he got to be a part of it uh, as well and experience it. Uh, Jim yeah, Tim wants there. to know, Jim Tim wants to know, did you know Adam Terry? Where would I – I don't know where I've known him from. I'm so bad with names. Um, where would he know uh, Adam Terry from, Jim Tim? Obviously I can not. search it. Adam Terry. Two generic names. <laughs> yeah. He played for the – drafted by the Ravens, former uh, Adam Terry. Yeah, Play, you talking about he played at Syracuse? He actually never played. He played for the Ravens, Colts, Chargers, Jags, and Titans. He was a. Uh, I should know. Him he's a second bad. round but, pick. Yeah, I don't. Yeah, I, don't, I might have played him. I might have not. I'm sorry about that. Oh, he's uh, a strength coach. He's a strength coach. Where is he a strength coach at, Jim Tim? Let me see, Adam Terry. Jim let Tim. me. Yeah, Jim Jim Tim is uh he's a coach up in Rochester, New York. He watches almost every episode, and I'm gonna be sending him some totem pole. Gear, that's the name of our YouTube channel that yeah, yeah. Championship Football Coaches Clinic is a part of. Um, but, Coach, I mean, thank you for coming on in such a quick, I mean, notice. Uh, yeah. Sorry to break up your workout, um, but yeah, I'm just gonna go you know, for a hopefully run. all the Florida State fans appreciate what you're doing and they're going to follow you. Um, 
What uh, anything else you'd like to say to the Florida State fans out there, or any coaches that may be listening? You know, you're you're open um, for a coaching job. Will you relocate? Yeah, absolutely. Uh, just the whole thing is, you know, my wife right now is the breadwinner. She's administrator, so uh, it's just kind of tough. I, I love being where I'm at. I'm with my baby girl every day and get to watch her grow and smile and make faces. And it's just amazing how a little poop machine can change your whole logic of thinking. But uh, amen. You know, wherever's wherever's the right fit and. Uh, I want to run the damn ball, obviously. Uh, I love co- I love the passing game. I love coaching tight ends as well, and I've had a lot to do with special teams, been a part of uh, taking care of punt team and helping out on kickoff return, kickoff, and, and whatnot, and, and uh, punt return. But um, I love football. Coach, I would say go get, get in one of those high schools down there, man, and just – you will have so much fun, man. Yeah. You change you kids. Know, I- might have something in the works coming up. I'm not for sure yet, but, uh, you know, we'll, we'll see in a couple of days and – uh, I definitely love football so much, and it's hard not to want to do it. Uh, I'm addicted to it. I love it, and I love being around people that love football. And that's why I love listening to your podcast. And thank you so much for having me on. And uh, I look forward to watching your podcast a lot more. If you're gonna have old school guys like that, like like those jokes going back and forth between Trickett and McNally and you guys, and like I miss being around that. I miss that camaraderie. I, I miss the cutting up and bullshit. And, and, and the, 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 <laughs> so, so really, really that's all this is. This is just me BSing with people and cutting up and having fun. I mean, that's just, football's I love fun, it, right? Football's fun. Yeah. Like, like, why not? My whole I life think, revolves around it. I always yeah. said, I, I've always said this, that you know, how you ever watch the office? The what? The office? You ever, yeah. You ever watch that show? No, I'm the only person that has never seen it. I've never seen John Wick one, two and three, but I've seen four. And that's a bad man. John Wick is a bad man. So if you ever seen The Office, they, they need a, a show like that, but the coach's version uh, of just sitting around and, and documenting everything that goes on the office, but there's and make it funny. Like I, I want to, I think that'd be a funny show. I think a lot of people would watch it. But well, uh, I mean, however we can do it, uh, I'm in. Jim Tim uh, yeah, would right? be excellent. Jim Tim yeah. would be an excellent character. I think Jim Tim is actually like one of the characters on The Office. Someone told me that. Jim Tim was like a character on Office. I don't know which one. All right. I got you. I, I, I'll have to look it up. But, Coach, I'm all in. If you want to do the coach's version of the Office, I'm in it. Uh, we got, we right. got to do something at some point. But I really appreciate you having me on. And uh, it means a lot that you, you know, take 52 minutes and 30 something seconds of your life to talk to me. I really appreciate yeah, it. Yeah, brother. Sorry, sorry I wasn't in the house. I'm out and about. But, uh, no, nah, man. Have a great I, I day. Hope you you coming on, yourself. brother. He said, yeah, I live in about- Oh, Jim Tim. I lived about an hour from where the office was filmed. Jim, Tim, were you on the office? Electric City. Wow. Oh, that's awesome. Hey, that's see you, Coach. Unbelievable. Thank you for coming if on. on the, if, you, if you ever want to talk football, let me know. If you ever want me to get on here show some film and talk some football, I'd be down. Yes. So yes, I know. do. Yes, I do. I want you right. to come on here. Why don't you just take us through the 2013 game, the when y'all won the championship? Take I us through the that. offensive cutups of the national Holy championship. Crap, I could do that. That sounds good. I'll, okay, uh, so I'm I'm and, all uh, for spring break. I'm spring break. I got all all week. Next week I'm off. Tuesday I'm going to the UNC Tar Heels. I've had four of their coaches. Clyde Christensen was on the show. Did you see that? I had Tom Brady and Peyton Manning no. coach. He was on this show, dude. Clyde Christensen. And he's coaching at UNC. Wow. And they've asked me to come down there. Can you believe that? They were so impressed with me. They want me to come to practice. You better get your I'm ass going down to there. there. I'm going down there. Go. I'm ne- I love Michael Jordan, the jump man. I even have a fake Michael Jordan rookie card. All right? But we can do That's it any awesome. day, Coach. Let's just go through the offensive cut-ups of the national championship. Every play, and you walk us through it. It might take two hours. Play, we're going to be here a while. <laughs> yeah, I mean, let's just go through all the that. Break every little thing down. Once, you, once, you're, once, you're, once, right, once your good. wife and up. your baby's gone to bed, we'll do it. You know what I'm saying? Like, we'll, we'll just go ahead yeah. and do it once they've gone to sleep. All right? Text okay. me, all right? I'm with you on See that. you, yeah, coach. Let me get to work on that. Okay. All right, sir. I appreciate you. Have a good one. Bye, brother.